So yeah, what I'd like to do for the last half an hour is I want to check out Metal Burbs top ten albums of 2022 so far. I think this will be kind of interesting, um, you know, kind of see where he stands and kind of like what I think of the albums because I've checked out, you know, probably not as many albums as him, but I've checked out a fair amount. Um, and I'm curious to see what we overlap on and what we kind of uh, disagree on. So I, I'm curious about that. So let's check it out. Let's. Uh, I, I was going to watch this, and then I decided not to because I figured maybe this could be something to watch on here with you guys. Uh, so let's do it. But, yeah, as you guys can see, twitch.tv slash Metal Wednesday and Sundays. So make sure you check him out. But let's check out Metal Burb's top 10 albums of 2022 so far. Let's check it out. Today on the stream, we are doing the top 10 best albums, in my opinion, my personal list of 2022 so far. My list is kind of all over the place, so don't expect just metalcore or like prog or whatever. There's all right. Well, that's the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah. No, I'm kidding. Let's go. It's going to be a decent amount of variety. Too much chit chat. Let's get onto the list. So let's fuck do it. Number 10 is a prog band okay these as you guys know i'm a big fan of prog okay i i i, I love it but dude i i hope songs never end okay these guys you know these guys really have found a niche of okay. sounding like a whole bunch of different kind of prog bands whether it's like you know dream theater with lots of synth they also sound like cynic at times because they're very atmospheric these guys can shred i was very impressed with this record when we checked it out live i'm not a big Twitch. prog fan and number 10 goes but... to persephone metanoia Okay, so I actually have a one Persephone song on my Apple from like iTunes from a while ago. I can't remember the name of it, but um, these guys aren't bad for like the genre, from what I from what I've heard. But I I, I couldn't name a song. I have heard of them before though. Yeah. Shreddy Boys. Okay. It's very very busy music. So here's another song from them. So yeah, you're hearing a lot of clean vocals. If this is like your first time hearing this band, they actually have like a strong death metal component to their music too. So that okay. song is cool. It's one of their singles. Uh, but this song is just an instrumental, just badass track. I, it's like, oh my God, that album is 57 minutes long. Oh my God. Almost 10 minutes long, I believe. Uh, number nine is okay. one of the most unique metal records that I've heard in a while, and that's why it's going to be in my top ten, but it's just wicked fun. I'm going to guess this is Bloody Wood. I kind of saw it, like, in the thumbnail a little bit, and based off of this, I'm going to guess it's Bloody Wood. Um, it's not an everyday listen, really, but there's no denying anytime I put this record on, it's just fun. Like, there's, there's a decent variety on this album, too, which I really like, uh, but these guys sound like Unlike anybody else, they're doing really well, especially in North America, because these guys are from India and they play Indian folk metal. Yep. And I'm talking about Bloody Wood. Yep. The album is called Rack Shack. Yeah, before he plays these clips, I, I really liked this album. Um, lots of really interesting songs. It was not at all what I expected. And it's got one of the hardest lines in music that I've heard. I put my fist through the face of a rapist. Like, holy Damn, that's that's a hard line. And this here. This is Dana Dan, I believe. Come on, tell me that rhythm and the melodies are not so infectious. Holy crap, it's so I agree. upbeat. It's so Agreed. energetic. Um, they also mix in like lots of different instruments. Yeah, a flute down. I remember that. <clears throat> Uh, this song has a really good breakdown. That's one of the first tracks on the album. Number eight was actually yeah. kind of a disappointment when I first reacted to it and reviewed it. But after some time, I realized that the main singles are just like a good portion of the songs on this record. I keep going back to. I'm going to guess again, looking at his thumbnail, I'm going to guess this is North Lane. But it's definitely not going to be in my top five because, like, the album is so inconsistent. Although every song okay, is maybe not. 
good. There's only a couple of songs that are great, but those great songs I keep going back to. And that's why I have to put this record in my top 10. And it goes to Bad Omens, okay. The Death of Peace of Mind. I got to be honest with y'all. I was not a fan of this album at all. I liked um, Artificial Suicide, but just I'm not, I'm not into this this vibe of, of like this type of music. And I, I just I think that Noah um, is a is an Ollie uh, Sykes body double. I'm, I'm convinced of that at this point. Um, I, I really think that I, if he's not a body double, he's definitely a, a stunt double. We'll put it that way. Yeah, so this record, like uh, Bad Omens, they've always been kind of like a Brain of the Rise and copycat, um, but I feel like... Okay, I'm not the only one. With this new record, they're actually kind of branching out from that quite a bit. Uh, but these guys, the songs are all over the place, which kind of like makes it a con, but as well as a pro. Uh, because, yeah, there is a big amount of inconsistency with the record. Uh, but it's still really good. So like this song, Nowhere to Go, has like a strong pop punk kind of vibe to it. Yeah, that that song, that that chorus was, uh, 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 what was it? Was it uh, Fallout Boy or something? But we we went over this when I was first listening to it. It's uh, um, oh my god, it's in my head. I can't remember what it is. Uh, it, oh god, I, I think it's Fallout Boy. I think, but that chorus is exactly like it issue that i had with this album is that one of the main singles i put out was one of the best songs we're all dying in the like end. Their heavy side and bad omens that, that is that so chorus. good at writing heavy music when they know how to be heavy unfortunately the album is not really a metalcore album which is fine but it's more of a pop rock album the thing is one of their main singles is a metalcore song and it it's so so good dude and i really wish there was more tracks like artificial suicide true true yeah, I like that song a lot. The rest, I mean, I, I throw it in the recycling bin, you know what I mean? So next one is, uh, um, this is a very underground band, which is the, unfortunate the because, well, their music is definitely not mainstream at all. It's very... It's progressive, it's mathy, and it has a strong post element. So all of those genres okay. are a little bit more niche, and that's why uh, this band isn't getting talked about too much. But yeah, this is a really, really good record. It's going to be on a lot of people's like you know top three best albums of the year, at least this so far. For me, I just have other preferences, but okay. this, there's no denying that this is such a well-crafted record. I'm talking about Rolo Tomasi, where myth becomes memory. I don't think I've ever heard a Rolo Tomasi song. I know who he is. If it, is it a person or is it a band? I, I believe it's a person. I've never heard a song. Yeah, so like this song is it, it's chaotic. It's uh, energetic. So the, yeah, that sounds these guys cool. have like two different sounds. So if yeah. this is your first time hearing them. Well, then listen to this track, because this track shows a much different side to the band, which is a big integral part to their sound, which is the post-rock elements. What? That's a weird contrast. I like the first sound. The second one, I don't know. So really, if you're a fan of like Dillinger Escape Plan and that kind of chaotic like math core, then you're going to like this. But also, if you're a fan of like Sigur Ross or explosions in the sky, like that kind of post, then you're probably going to like this too. If you're a fan of cigars. All right, number six is a record that I literally just heard. Honestly, this is a band that when I first heard one of their songs, I was blown away by, you know, they really captured the nostalgic sound of post-hardcore, but they still man managed to make it sound refreshing. Um, so when I heard okay. the new album, I had some good, like, decent expectations for it. They managed to surpass it. The record just constantly has so many surprises. It's just a really well-crafted record, better than I expected. And it goes to Static Dress, Rouge Carpet Disaster. <laughs> I know what y'all are going to say in the chat right now. Rich, why didn't you react to this album yet? I know I have to. I have to. 
I will eventually. I just, in general, I'm not a huge fan of this sound, but I know that people want me to, so I will eventually, I promise. But I have not heard this album yet. Yeah, I've been listening to this record a lot lately. That sounds cool. Yeah, so it has like a strong under oath or only chasey safety vibes and like mm-hmm. uh, scary kids, scaring kids, drop dead gorgeous. So if you like know those bands that I'm mentioning, then you're probably going to like this a lot. So yeah, these guys know how to be heavy when they need to be heavy, but they can also do soft really well. So who said it in the chat, but Marisol is a beautiful song. Holy crap, this song really floored me when I heard it live. Spoilers. Number five on my list right. is uh, it's not metal. Yeah, I'm really impressed with the new Kendrick Lamar album, as expected. I have um, not heard that at all. Yeah, the new album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. Oh, yeah. Take off the fufu. Take off the cloud chase. Take off the Wi-Fi. Take off the fabricated streams and the microwave memes. It's a real world outside. Take off your idols. So yeah, I know okay. this is going to be like the one-off pick, especially for like a generally like metal list. Um, the thing is about Kendrick, why I've always liked his music is that he does play around with, like time signatures. He plays around with like uh, key changes and beat changes. His music is like pretty progressive at times um, where I feel like a lot of rap tends to be quite generic and sometimes the lyrics would be really cringy. Kendrick is much more personal with his lyrics. And um, like I said, the songwriting, the flows of the mu- uh, of his music are really, really cool. So- Metal Burp, quit with the rap bullshit. Okay, guys, I get it. True. I get it, all right? Oh, man, this record really clicked with me. So coming at number four is an instrumental record. Um, oh, you know, a lot of people think. God. Okay. So this is number four on Metal Burp's list. This would be number 400 on my list. I am, I, I shouldn't say hate. I strongly dislike instrumental music. I just do. It's just like uh, musicianship kind of wankery. Not for me. I think this record has like a really good sense of repetition, melody, and kind. Of, it's hypnotic. That's kind of the best way to uh, sum it up. It constantly has repeating patterns, but it's so complex. Is it animals that, as leaders? Uh, when you're listening to it, you feel kind of perplexed listening to it, but it's also like really captivating for me. Um, maybe also it helps that I play guitar so I can hear what's up, some of the things what's going up? on. I can visually see what's happening too on the guitar. So it, the album's not going to be for everyone, but I really, really like Animals as Leaders, Parhesia. I mean, the thing is, is like, do the music. I, the thing is with albums like this is like you can listen to it as like an everyday person and be like, wow, that's like cool what they're doing. But I think what keeps you coming back to it is if you have a background in guitar playing and you can appreciate it in a way that is beyond like, whoa, did you see what he did? That's so crazy. You know what I mean? And that, that's kind of just that, that that's really it for me because I'm not I don't have a background in guitar. I think it's just wild. Like it's definitely not an easy listening experience, but like I was saying, it's like hypnotic, the amount of repetition and just the technicality behind it is just mind blowing to listen to. Red Mizo, this song has one of the coolest sounding breakdowns I've heard all year. Their music videos are really interesting too. So yeah, that pick makes okay. the prog heads happy, but we're going to move on to something else. Uh, the next one is not prog. Well, it can be a little bit progressive at times, only because their sense of structures and flow is okay. it's more mathy. I'll say it's more mathy than progressive because these guys have a strong math core element. Um, they have like a little bit of a southern twang, very similar to Every Time I Die and Dillinger Escape Plan. So since both of those bands have broken up, Greyhaven is going to be filling that spot okay. with a new album, This Bright and Beautiful World. I don't think I've heard this album either. I think the song... 
I think the songs that I've heard by these guys, I wasn't like a massive fan of, um, if I recall correctly. But I know that Burb is, you know, big Every Time I Die fan. So this this is this makes sense. Uh, they also have like clean vocals too. So it's not just like, you know, screaming the whole way through. So a good example of this is All Candy. This song is much more of just like a rock ballad and it's a lot less chaotic and mathy. I've heard this song. This song, again, just chaotic. It, it's super energetic. Okay. All right, all right. Let's move on to the next one, which is probably going to be the most controversial one on this list. Uh, because this is one of the most divisive records of the year. I personally loved it. I think this whole record is a vibe. Uh, it's funny because when I listen to this just is going to be North Lane. Own, I don't love it, but when I listen to it start to finish, it hits a lot different. Uh, to me, this is so refreshing in this convoluted metalcore scene with just like gent breakdowns that having a strong EDM influence, I think works really well for this band. I'm obviously talking about North Lane Obsidian. People either hate it or love it. Yeah, so my thing with this is, like, there were definitely some tracks that, like, I came back to that I like, like, Carbonized, I really liked a lot. I initially wasn't too into it. I liked Obsidian off the bat, but that's about it for me, man. I thought there were some songs on this record that were just downright bad. Like, I, like I, I'll be honest. Like, there was that one song... Um, is it might have been this song here to me it's such a cool record for a band that is like you know they could just do the same metalcore approach that they've been doing for years right the electronics or carried the album yeah the electronics were cool and tapping into and like a style of music that ha has been done but not in this kind of way because abomination yes latrin yes yes abomination that song i i didn't i was like i don't get this at all i don't get this clarity was another one that i didn't really care for but yeah, I would say that Obsidian and, and uh, Carbonized are cool. Because North Lane cool. has like almost a post-hardcore influence. So like, it sounds kind of refreshing. It does, like, you know, there's Static X. There's other bands that have mixed electronics, like the algorithm, progressive metal. But North Lane has a different take at it. And like this song, it sounds like... Oh, wait, hold on. I guess I was in the chat. It says, Richard Jim, hope you're doing well, my guy. I legitimately do not remember that. <laughs> okay. I must have come in uh, towards the tail end here. I didn't even, yeah, okay. I'm like Dead Mouse would write. They're not sacrificing, you know, being artistic and exper being experimental. They're not writing generic kind of music to sell to their fans. And I find that extremely refreshing for a band that's pretty late in their career. Well, not late, but, you know, has a good amount of longevity. Yeah, see this song, this song's cool. Instead of having breakdowns like they've had many times over their discography, they're doing like techno beats. Yeah, see this song, I I, I don't get it. It doesn't sound cheesy. It sounds like legit. Sounds bad. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Okay, I'm trying. I'm, I'm I'm being I'm being I'm being an asshole for no reason. Okay, but I, I I just didn't like it. Jit like an actual EDM artist that's been around for like. Uh, many years to me it just sounds like really high quality edm with really high quality uh metalcore another song obsidian the title track i think this song is epic yes i would agree with that um all right all right time for number one when i first heard it early in this year <laughs> it hasn't shifted and uh for good reason this record is just wicked wicked <laughs> fun this is everything i love about metal music again just a wicked fun time listening to this record and it goes to enterprise earth the chosen yeah i this is up there for me as well um so many good songs on this record man and uh it's a great record for Dan to leave on. We'll say that. I, I mean, just this record, so many good songs, man. Like, yeah, I gotta pull up the. I gotta pull up the song. I can't remember the song names off the top of my head, but let me pull it up on my phone here real quick, because I, I did really, I really liked um, this record a lot. Uh, let's see, Enterprise Earth. Yeah, so yeah, we're so reanimate disintegrate. That song's awesome. 
A lot of people liked Overpass. I wasn't too into that one. Um, oh, wait, that was the one featuring Matt Honeycutt. Yes, I did like that one, actually. There was one that was like eight minutes long that I wasn't too into. But yeah, Unleash Hell, Reanimate, Disintegrate, Where Dreams Are Broken. Lots of good songs. You know, it is a deathcore record, but even Wait, just over deathcore doesn't seem to be doing it justice because some of my favorite yeah, Overpa albums Overpass are was the that long are a little bit song. more genre-bending. Okay. So I'm trying to remember. This my, my bad. from Enterprise okay. Earth, The Chosen, primarily a deathcore record, but it has strong metalcore influence, but it also has strong progressive metal elements. Some of their songs clocking at seven minutes and eight minutes long, and I love that. I don't. Uh, most of their songs are like five to six minute range. And I, those are some of my favorite song durations in music too. They also throw in like, that's still too long, like thrash metal and old school, like eighties, like hair metal into their music too. So there's so many different elements of metal music all thrown into this one record. And it's just wicked fun from a guitar perspective because there's so many memorable riffs. Vocals are really, really good. And, but yeah, enterprise earth, this album is just wicked. Your comment is, is in there. One of the best songs still the, the best death record Overpass. of the year. Yeah, that's Overpass, yeah. Yeah, so they got the disgusting breakdowns. I got too many examples, so this song, you couldn't save me. Uh, the riffage is great. Well, another example, they have no honor. This is when I go into thrash metal. Yeah, this is a, this is a great record. This is up there for me. And then one of my favorite moments on the record is from the title track, "The Chosen," which is a eight minute and thirty four second long song. Like I said, it's just a really, really fun record. It's riffy, it's progressive. I it's believe that's heavy, the song I put on the melodic. playlist. It's everything that I love about metal music, and that's why it's such a fun record, man. But guys, guys, I gotta shut the hell up, all right? What is your number one, okay? I, I think a lot of people have said it. So for me, I think my number one is Consumer, I believe. But I'll say this, though. I haven't been absolutely blown away by any albums yet this year. I haven't. I, a lot of them are like 80, 85. Like, they're good. Like, they're fun. Like, they're good. But I'm waiting to be blown away. Like, like last year, it was Brand of Sacrifice. Like, I heard that. I was like, holy shit. Like, I'm hoping for something like that. You know what I'm saying? I haven't got that quite yet. Hopefully, Spite will change that. Uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, you know, we get Downer Part 2 from uh, 1056. That's, a, that's an EP, but I'm excited for that, of course. Um, but, yeah, man, I thought this was a pretty cool list. I mean, Metal Burb and I, he's a great guy. We get along very, very well. But uh, we obviously have very different tastes. So I was very curious to see, you know, kind of what he thought, um, you know, in terms of the album. So, yeah, give it a like. Uh, give him a sub if you haven't already. I'll link the video there. So make sure you go check it out. Leave, like I said, leave him a comment, leave him a like, all that stuff.